October 2025. At a key logistics base deep in a rear area, the daily routine is running as usual. The illusion of security is so thick you could cut it with a knife. However, what the guards and radar don't detect is that operators from the SBU's Alpha Group are queuing up a series of coordinates for a very loud physics demonstration. This isn't a diversionary strike, it's a scheduled priority delivery, like suddenly realizing there are a dozen cash-on-delivery orders in your name all set to arrive at the same time. This is the star of the show, the FP-2 attack drone. This isn't the FPV toy you see in the daily news. The FP-2, designed by Firepoint, is the answer to the question, what if we traded range for payload? They took the FP-1 design, which is capable of flying 1,400 kilometers, and drastically cut its range down to 200 kilometers. Why? To make room for a colossal 105-kilogram payload, a high-impact effects package. This is no longer a kamikaze drone. It's low-cost flying artillery. Essentially, it's a package delivery service that guarantees your order will arrive through the recipient's roof, not at the reception desk. Of course, these targets are guarded more tightly than a secret family recipe. These high-value assets sit inside a layered defensive bubble. The first is the R330ZH Zetel, an electronic warfare system whose main job is to shout as loudly as possible across the radio spectrum. The ZTEL floods a 30 to 50 kilometer area with radio noise, specifically designed to disrupt GPS signals and severe satellite control links. If anyone is lucky enough to get through that, they have to face the Panzer S1. The Panzer is a paranoid short-range air defense SHORAD system combining 1257E6 to E interceptors, 20 km range, and two 2A38M 30mm autocannons, 5,000 rounds per minute. This system is like a home security setup that not only locks the doors, but is also ready to launch interceptors at a suspicious-looking postman. The FP-2 used in this operation is the autonomous variant. The SBU operators just need to upload the target coordinates, press a button, and hope for the best. The drone relies on dual guidance. For the initial cruise phase, it uses standard GPS, but its ace in the hole is a well-calibrated inertial navigation system, the INS. The INS doesn't look outside, it feels its own movement using high-precision gyroscopes and accelerometers. Imagine being asked to walk across a pitch-black room, make two turns, and find the doorknob based only on your memory of the layout. You might bump into a coffee table, but you'll end up in the right general area. 2245. At an undisclosed launch location, several FP2s get underway. They fly low, using terrain contours to stay below the main radar horizon. For an hour, everything goes smoothly. 2350. They hit the invisible wall. The jamming bubble projected by the R330ZH Jetel. Instantly, the GPS signal is cut. At the SBU monitoring station, the telemetry would show that the drones are now flying blind. This is the digital moment where the drone is on its own. The operators seeing that probably felt a familiar, mild panic, like when your Wi-Fi dies right in the middle of a movie, everything just stops and you can only hope. But the FP-2 was built for this. The system automatically switches to pure INS navigation. For the next 40 minutes, the drone flies based only on its internal calculations, accounting for every turn and every meter of altitude change. 0015. After covering dozens of kilometers with no external eyes, the drones are remarkably still on course. They are now 40 kilometers from the target. And this means they have just appeared on the Panzer S1's radar screen. 
The Panzer operator must have been confused by this small, incredibly slow-moving blip. It didn't look like an interceptor, and it was too slow for an aircraft. Finding it on an air defense radar is like finding a tortoise crossing the highway. You're not sure how it got there, but you know it's going to end badly. 0018. The target is now 25 kilometers out. The Pantsir operator isn't taking any chances. He locks on. 257E6E interceptors rocket from their tubes, accelerating to Mach 3 in seconds. These interceptors are designed to take down maneuvering F-16s or fast-moving cruise platforms. They use a radio proximity fuse. The problem? The FP-2 is too small, too slow, and made of composite materials. The first interceptor zips past, its fuse failing to register a valid target. The second meets the same fate, a waste equivalent to using a bazooka to swat a fly. 0, 0, 19. Target range is now 8 kilometers. The Pantsir operator, likely starting to curse, switches to plan B, cannons. 0, 0, 20. Range, 4 kilometers. The 230mm 2A38M cannons roar to life spitting out 5,000 rounds per minute. The sky is filled with lines of tracer rounds trying to create a wall of fire. This effort is no more effective than trying to water one small plant in your garden with a fire hose from across the street. You'll make a huge mess, but the plant will probably be fine. 0, 0, 20 hours and 30 seconds. Too late. The INS calculations proved accurate. The FP-2 makes its final adjustments and dives for its terminal phase. It slips right under the minimum depression angle of the cannons, which can no longer aim at it. 0, 0, 20 hours and 45 seconds. Contact. The 105 kilogram payload strikes right in the middle of the munitions depot. A massive initial detonation is immediately followed by a series of secondary effects, turning the base into an inferno. At other locations, the second and third FP-2s repeat the success. The SBU's fireworks have been delivered. The Pantsir operators watching this might be wondering if their system's warranty covers this kind of humiliation. The lesson from this operation is stark and clear. Modern conflict is no longer won simply by whoever has the most expensive and most advanced defense system. The question now is, can your $50 million defense system economically counter a dozen $50,000 smart platforms coming from multiple directions? The FP-2 has blurred the lines between a UAV, artillery, and a guided projectile. This whole situation is like realizing your company's multi-billion dollar cybersecurity system was just breached by a teenager who guessed your password was password123. Watch your six.